volleyball. Come on, that's a girl sport. Yeah, you're replacing the girls' coach. Girls? I can't coach girls. Why not? Because I'm used to guys, that's why. Girls, you gotta worry all the time. They're gonna hurt themselves. They're kind of wimpy, you know? Last class. I want last class. <laughs> Excuse me. I thought I was the one who was supposed to be standing up in front of the class. not sure dry. Your dryer is broken. If the lecture's over, I'd like to use the dryer now. It's getting late. All right. This is the last time you get an allowance. Buy one of your own. You're so sweet. Sisters, boy, are they weird. I'm weird. At least I don't stand in front of the mirror on a box pretending I'm in the NBA. You know, Jonathan, of all the assignments, my favorite is coaching. I'm glad to hear it. Did the boss tell you what sport it is? Is it baseball? You know, I was a pretty fine first baseman over at the academy. I, I don't think they have this sport at the academy. No? What sport is it? It's, it's volleyball. Volleyball? Volleyball? Come on, that's a girl's sport. Yeah, you're replacing the girl's coach. Girls? I can't coach girls. Why not? Because I'm used to guys, that's why. Girls, you gotta worry all the time. They're gonna hurt themselves. They're kind of wimpy, you know. Mark, I think these girls might surprise you. Oh, I doubt it. <laughs> I don't have to worry about your vote, do I, Kate? And what are you running for now, Richard? What else? Prom king. I'll probably be taking Melanie. Of course. Well, she is the prettiest girl in school. She also thinks you're about as exciting as a soundtrack of an underwater ballet. Hi, Sammy. How's my favorite volleyball player? Sammy, why don't you go pick on someone your own size? Like that drinking fountain over there. <laughs> Come on, Sammy. We'll be late for time. Let's face it, Melanie. 
You and I together have King and Queen locked up. Richard. I've got them away tonight, Mel. So I get a limo to match your dress. I'm not sure, Richard. I told you, Mel. Danny's not going to prom. He's working that night. Hi, Danny. Hey, Mel. Richard. How's the job going? It's pretty good. If you like pizza. Yeah, no. I thought I might stop by tonight after practice. Oh, Mel, it gets pretty busy. Why don't I call you from work? Sure. Sure. I'll see you later. I'll be waiting by the phone. Now, class, it's time for our poetry lesson. Oh, notes, class. We must have notes. There must be lots of notes. I wish I was a fish. I wish I was a bass. I'd climb up all the little trees and slide down on my hands and knees. <laughs> Told you, didn't I? Notes, class. Where are those pencils, class? Pencils. We must see pencils. Roses are red. Violets are blue. I'm schizophrenic, and so am I. <laughs> Last class. I want laugh, class. Excuse me. I thought I was the one who was supposed to be standing up in front of the class. Uh, you're the stand-up teacher. I'm the stand-up comic. Oh. Well, for the next 50 minutes, you're going to be the sit-down mime. Yes, sir. All right, class, my name is Jonathan Smith, and I'll be your history teacher for the next few days. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Smith, uh, my name is Richard Davies, and I'm senior class president. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Um, I don't know if you're aware of it, Mr. Smith, but senior class prom is this weekend. And as senior class president, I would like to invite everyone over to my house this Sunday for an after prom swim. Whoa. Uh, and uh, don't forget to vote for prom king. <laughs> Now, if you finish your campaign speech, Mr. Davies, I'd like to get on with the class. Oh, yeah, by all means. Please continue. Very kind of you. A philosopher said those who don't learn from the mistakes of history are bound to repeat them. On a more personal level, you all have families with a history. And so your essay due this Monday will be to write your family's history. You can start with your grandparents, where they came from, what kind of work they did, what they were like, and what you learned from. All right, listen up. We're split into teams, do a little scrimmage. Marianne's not here yet, Coach. They need a front liner. Oh. Well, I'll fill in for her until she gets here. I'll play at half speed so nobody gets hurt. Laura? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Coach. Okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm fine. You sure? I'm fine, yeah. I'm really sorry. It's all right. I'm fine. I'm fine. Can't do anything? No, no, I'm fine. You, you are you Marianne? Yeah. Uh, uh, that's good. That's good. Uh, well, let's get into the game here. We don't want to break up the teams, you know. Uh, you walk along just uh, scrimmage, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, oh. What's the problem, Danny? You used to eat like a horse. Not very hungry, Dad. Too much leftover pizza. You shouldn't eat so much of that stuff anyway, Danny. It's bad for your cholesterol levels. This country was not built on hardened arteries. You know why he's not hungry, don't you? Because the prom is this Friday, and he can't afford to go because his old man is out of a job. Isn't that it, son? No, Dad, I... Then eat. Come on, Pete. You'll be back at work soon. I know it. Yeah, you know it. I know it. The company knows it. Too bad my creditors don't know it. Well, they'll just have to wait. Oh, well, that's not what you said last week when, when you told me about that opening at Bill's gas station. You've always done such a great job on our cars. I just thought... Yeah, you just thought that if I went to work on the neighbor's cars that all of our problems would be solved. Well, I hate to disappoint you, Marie, but I did not get a degree in engineering so that I could become a grease monkey. 
I said I was sorry. 20 years working on the most sophisticated airplanes in the world, and she wants me to change mufflers for $7.50 an hour. And even that wouldn't begin to pay the interest on this place. I didn't want to go to the prom anyway, Dad. Besides, Melanie's going with Richard Davies. Oh, you're not good enough to go with her now that your old man's out of work. Is that it? She doesn't even... <sighs> May I be excused? I have to get back to work. Go ahead, dear. Ben. You busy? And our new teacher wants us to write a paper about our family's history. Huh. Interesting assignment. Huh. You looked so pretty at that homecoming dance. Mom, I'm not going. You could always ask Johnny Bass. I know, I know, he's just a junior. But he's six feet three, and the only tall boy in school that doesn't have a date. I was just trying to be helpful, darling. It's a night you'll always remember. Then it's one memory I won't have to worry about, because I'm not going. There's nothing I can say that'll make you change your mind. Nothing. Mom, I really have to write this paper, okay? Okay. I've shrunk. Hey! Sorry. You want to come with us to the movies? I can't, sis. I'm auditioning at the laugh track tonight. I thought you auditioned there last week. Practice makes perfect. Could I borrow $10? You're lucky I'm not going to the prom. Justine says it's bad luck not to go to your prom. It's bad luck not to go to your wedding. It's okay luck not to go to your prom. See ya. walks into the psychiatrist's office and says, I'm schizophrenic. <clears throat> the psychiatrist says, that makes four of us. <clears throat> Speaking of doctors, a guy walks into the doctor's office with a frog on his head. Doctor says, where did you get that? The frog says it started as a ward on my behind. <clears throat> Control yourself, Mr. Hazen. You're getting better, kid. But not better enough? I didn't say that. So when do I start? I'll call you. Right, and the check is in the mail. The next opening, I'll call you. You promise? I said I'd call you. I'll call you. <laughs> hey, you won't regret it, Mr. Hazen. I've got star written all over me. Uh, just make sure you can wash it off, kid. <laughs> Mark, considering you weren't hungry, you did a pretty good job on the pizza. Hmm. Large pizzas are not as big as they used to be. Oh, really? Well, serious, Jonathan. They used to be that big. Can I get you anything else, Mr. Smith? No, thanks, Danny. Just a check, please. Danny, don't you think that the pizzas have shrunk in the last few years? Well, I've only been here a couple months, but they've been the same size since I got here. Hey, Danny boy, you got change for a buck? Well, you gotta call Melanie. Melanie! How you doing, beautiful? Just checking in about the you-know-what. Blue, now that's a great color. Matches my eyes. 
Well, I can't wait. Uh, hold on. I, I think someone wants to talk to you. Is there something you want to say to Melanie? Well, I guess he doesn't. Hey, I'll see you tomorrow, babe. You should check. Yeah. Keep the change. Boy. Fuck, oh, Danny, that's enough! Hey, what are you doing? You can't punch customers out like that. Not in my restaurant. Look, you get a job somewhere else, huh? Maybe you sell peanuts at a hockey match. That customer's like the fuck. Hey, come on, they just had a little disagreement. I mean, nobody got hurt. First you tell me my large beach is small. Now you're telling me I can't fire my own waiter? Says, when did you buy my business, huh? How come I don't know about it? Hey, come on, give the kids a break. What are you crying out loud? Forget it, coach. going to the prom with Richard. I know. I wanted to go with you, Danny. But the way you've been acting the last month. I'm sorry, Mel. I hope you have a good time. The net? Is that why it's still moving? I am talking to the ref, okay? So am I, okay? So why don't you just leave that big fat hoot of yours out of this? If you two are done, the call stands. Side out, Marion High. <laughs> it's all right, Coach. We'll get it back. Yeah, don't let her get to you, Coach. Come on, girls. Let's suck it up. No, Push one, girls, and it's ours. Let's go, Lions. Eat them up, kids! In a minute, darling. I'm trying to digest our volleyball defeat. Hey, those decorations are starting to look good. Well, there's only one senior prom, or so they tell me. What's wrong? You're not going? It's not looking good. Well, I thought you were fond of Kate. You noticed, huh? Yeah, why don't you ask her? That should be obvious, Mr. Smith. I'm barely five feet six. She's almost six feet. I need a stepladder to kiss her. Besides, a clown never gets the girl. Well, you always have to be the clown. When you're my height, you don't have a lot of choices. Oh, come on. Now, when's the last time you tried to be anything else? She'd never go with me. Well, how are you going to know unless you try? Believe me, Mr. Smith, I've been friends with Kate for six years, ever since we rode bikes together to junior high. She had a boy's bike. I had a girl's bike. She had to wait for me at all the signals. She waited. Yeah, she always waited. I still think you ought to ask her. I appreciate your interest, but she won't go out with me. Besides, I barely know how to dance. Well, that's no problem. All you need is a dance coach. 
Right, a dance coach. Yeah. Now, if I were you, I'd talk to Mr. Gordon. I think he's the man to help you. I, uh, I told your mother I'd help with the housework. Aren't you supposed to be down at the pizza parlor? I'm not working there anymore. What? I got fired last night for fighting. Fighting? Who were you fighting with? A customer. A customer? What's the matter with you? Did I raise a complete numbskull? After I change, I'm going down to the club sport. They need another stock boy. Don't worry, I'll still bring in my 325 an hour. I'm Jonathan Smith, Danny's history teacher. I found his notebook in the hall. Oh, thanks. He's, uh, he's in his room changing. I'll give it to him. How's Danny doing in school? He's doing all right so far. Of course, it's not easy when you work five hours a day and still try to keep up with your college studies. <laughs> Tell me about it. How do you think I got through engineering school? By working nights as a janitor, that's so. After 20 years building jets, they laid me off. Now I'm back house cleaning and my wife's working. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That must be hard on you. You're darn right it is. Not that anybody around here cares. My wife, uh, my wife wants me to go to work at the corner gas station, tuning up the neighbor's Mercedes. That's when things are rough. You just have to do what you have to do. Yeah, well, I don't have to work at a gas station wiping windshields for people I used to play golf with. Well, I didn't say you did. Look, I'd better be going. Hope things work out for you. Look, don't give me that school teacher condescension. I'll tell you something, Mr. Uh, Mr. Smith. You don't buy a house like this by, uh, by taking summers off. The mortgage payments alone would bring you to your knees. I'm in trouble with all of you. None of you understand how much pressure I'm under. Oh, I think your son does. What? I was in the pizza parlor last night when he got into the fight with Richard Davies over the prom. He spent this morning in my classroom just staring off into space. And this afternoon, he walks down the hall and drops his notebook, doesn't even notice it. Well, sir, I think your son feels just as much pressure as you do. Good luck. One of your teachers brought this by for you. Thanks, Dad. Danny, I don't know how much you just heard, I but... gotta go, Dad. Hi, Mr. Gordon. Hey, Sammy, how you doing? How'd practice go today? Uh, it was good. I just wish I was a better coach, you know? I'm afraid volleyball is not my game. How about dancing? What? Well, I need some coaching, and Mr. Smith said you might be able to help me out. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. You want me to teach you how to dance? Yeah. My prom's this weekend. I don't want to look any more ridiculous than I have to. Oh, Sammy, Sammy, I cannot teach you how to dance. I don't know what Jonathan was thinking about. I haven't danced in years. Mr. Smith said it was like riding a bicycle. Once you learn, you never forget. He did. All right, I'll give it my best shot. Yeah. <laughs> when do you want to start? Right now, if that's okay. There's only a few days to the prom. Oh. Well, look, I, I can't teach you without music. Got you covered. Oh. Well, I put on a slow one. I don't do that jerking around stuff. Oh, yeah. See, the great thing about these slow ones, you can get away with murder, especially if the floor is crowded. Come on, let's go. Here we go. Now, wait a minute. You, you lead, all right? Yeah, there you go. Now, just pretend like this whole floor is crowded, right? And you just start, you just start listening to music. You start moving a little bit like that. Just nothing fancy, just slow and easy. Oh, oh. Like this? <laughs> no, well, wait, 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 wait. Loosen up. You're too stiff here. Yeah. Loosen up. Loosen up your neck. Loosen that up. All right. You feeling loose? Yeah. All right, let's start again. Here we go. 
nice and easy, nice and loose. Right? Now remember, you gotta be in control so she knows where you're going. Right. <laughs> Good. Good, huh? Now we are ready for them to that Fred and Ginger stuff. Yeah. Oh, here, yeah, turn right around. <laughs> here we go. Hey, here this we is go. Fun. They just won. Hey. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. and I already rented a tux and everything. You want to be a comedian or a teenager? Can I be both? Not in show business, kid. I'll see you Friday. Mr. Hazen. Good evening, Miss Burke. Hi, Sammy. I thought you told me you were allergic to libraries. Libraries are all right. It's the books that bother me. You didn't bring any. No. Actually, I'm here to talk to Kate. I was hoping she doesn't have a date for the prom yet, does she? As of 20 minutes ago, she didn't. How you doing, Sammy? Hi, Mr. Smith. Richard. What's right with him? I thought you didn't like libraries. Oh, I don't. But this is kind of a special occasion. It is? Kate, I had a long talk with Mr. Smith this afternoon, and it got me thinking about history. It did? Did you know that Napoleon was only five feet four, and his wife Josephine was three inches taller? And there's Dudley Moore. He's shorter than me. And Susan Anton is taller than you, and they almost got married. I mean, look. I'm not that much shorter than you. I think I've grown a lot this last year. Sammy, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the prom. Oh. Will you go with me? I already run into tux, but I don't want you to feel any pressure. You know how much I like you, Sammy. <laughs> how much? Excuse me, Sammy. Oh, Sammy, I think your elevator socks may be shedding. <laughs> Forget I asked. <laughs> Mr. Smith, hey, weren't you back in the library? You left kind of fast, Sammy. I didn't have much choice. Why? What did she say? She said something like she liked me, but... But what? But who cares? I knew what she was going to say. I mean, the way she looked at me when that creep Davies came over. I don't know why I ever thought she'd go with me. Oh, come on, Sammy. You're not going to give up because of somebody like Richard Davies, are you? Not because of him. Because, like a friend of mine said, you're either a comedian or a teenager. Well, I'm through being a teenager. See you, Mr. Smith. The 
Looks great, doesn't it? I suppose. I wish the net was up. I want to work on my spikes. Is that all you think about, volleyball? Why not? It's all I have. Well, now you sound like your friend Sammy. He has to be a clown because he's too short, and you have to play volleyball because you're too tall. You two barely started out in life, and you've already set more limitations for yourselves than society ever would. Sammy doesn't have to limit himself. He can be anything he wants to be. Except your date at the prom. If I went with him, people would laugh at us. Mutt and Jeff. Right, I can already hear Richard Davies talking. Nobody laughs at your mom and dad. What are you talking about? Well, your mom was taller than your dad. Nobody laughed at them at the prom. Matter of fact, they won king and queen. My dad wasn't shorter than my mom. He was taller. No, not according to this. A Lincoln High yearbook from 25 years ago. Yeah, take a look at the picture. I found it in the library. They make a cute couple, don't they? He died when I was 10, but I remember him as being tall. Well, he wouldn't be the first kid to sprout up after he got out of high school. Of course, I don't think it bothered your mother one way or the other. If height meant everything, you'd all be in love with Andre the Giant. You just don't understand. Oh, I think I do. You, know, you tell me you don't want to go to the prom with Sammy because he's too short. The fact of the matter is you don't want to go with him because you think you're too tall. I am too tall. Oh, no, it's only in your mind. You're a lovely girl, Katie. Remembers herself as a gangly 10-year-old who was a head taller than the boys. Don't you think you ought to put the tough times behind you and get on with your life? As far as Richard Davies laughing at you, who cares if a yo-yo like that laughs? <laughs> you know, you're right. I wonder if Sammy still wants to go with me. All you can do is ask him. What'll it be? Yeah, fill it up with unleaded. Yes, sir. Let me get the windshield? Yeah. Mr. Briggs? When did you start working here? I started today. You gotta be kidding. What do you mean? Well, nothing. It's just that you're not working at the aircraft plant anymore? Nope. How come? Well, I decided it's never too late in life to try something more challenging. Oh, challenging? <laughs> now the 20 questions are over. I'll get to the windshield. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Go right ahead. <laughs> Where'd Dad go today? I don't know. He wasn't here when I came home. How's your new job? It's OK. Danny, the car's all gassed up and ready to go. Dad, you didn't have to take that lousy gas station job. Listen, when you're out of work, no job is a lousy job. Besides, I didn't take it because I, I've given up hope of getting my old job back. I took it because I care about you. Very much. And I'll do whatever I have to do to support this family. No matter what anybody thinks or anybody says. Come on, get dressed. Problem will be starting soon. I can't go. I don't have a date. If I knew that my best girl was going to be there, I wouldn't miss a chance for a dance or two. Get going. Danny, if you see Mr. Smith at the prom, give him a message for me. Sure. Tell him. Tell him if his car breaks down in the near future to bring it into bills, I'll take good care of him. I'll tell him, Dad. I love you, you know that. Yeah, well, you were always a sucker for a man in uniform. <laughs> break tonight. Who cares about a prom? That's kid stuff, right? And knock him dead tonight.
Sammy, Kate wants to talk to you. Why does she keep calling? Tell her I'm late. I gotta get to the club. Sammy. Mom, please. She's only been calling to say she's sorry. Can we still be friends? I don't need people feeling sorry for me. I don't feel sorry for you. Kate, I thought you were on the phone. I tried the phone. He wouldn't answer. Yeah, well, look, I understand. You no, know. you don't. I wasn't feeling sorry for you. I was feeling sorry for myself. For what? For being too tall, that's what. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of worrying about my height. And I'm not going to do it anymore. Now, you want to go to the prom or not? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> hey, can you give me a minute? Why? I got to take some socks out of my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Tonight, Mr. Smith. Uh, just fine, Richard. Melanie, you look lovely. Thank you. Well, what about me? You look lovely, too. <laughs> oh, Mr. Smith, he's a funny guy, isn't he? <laughs> you look lovely, Coach. Who's your friend? Oh, this is Brad. He came down from Hampton School to take me to the prom. Hey, Coach, how's it going? Listen, Nicole, he may have brought you, but he's not gonna take you home. I am calling this bozo a cab. Listen, son, the next time somebody asks you out, I hope you know how to behave. Now, let's go. Hey, suppose I don't wanna go. What? Suppose I don't wanna go. What are you gonna do about it? Oh, son, you don't want to know. Let's go. <laughs> Have a good time. It was so humiliating. I don't know why I asked Brad in the first place. I don't believe it. Will you look what's coming. <laughs> get that dress. My mother made it. Oh, well, it certainly is, uh, different. <laughs> she means you never looked better. <laughs> well, you don't look too bad yourself, Sammy. Are you wearing your elevator socks tonight? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I am. 
Are you wearing your mother's underwear tonight? <laughs> Come on, Kate. Let's dance. Look silly, or does that look silly? Oh, Richard, some people don't care what other people think. I know. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? Excuse me. Glad you could make it. Yeah, me too. Is Melanie here yet? Yeah, I saw her a few minutes ago. Hey, there she is, over by the buffet. Well, I guess I'll go over and say hello. Good luck. Oh, Mr. Smith, my dad wants you to know that if you ever have any car trouble, he's working at Bill's gas station. He'll take good care of you. Can you tell him thanks for me? Hi. Hi. Where's your date? Mm, I don't know. He's campaigning, I think. Where's yours? I came alone. I thought you had to work tonight. Yeah, well, I, I didn't. I sort of made that up. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. These last few months, I guess I've been acting a little strange. A lot strange. Right, <laughs> a lot strange. You see, my dad. Hey, Danny boy. Fancy meeting you here. You know, you never guess who I ran into this afternoon at the gas station. Your old man. Gee, must be quite a come down. One day building jets, and the next day pumping gas. <laughs> That's what I've been trying to tell you. My dad got laid off. He's been working at a gas station until his company gets a new contract. Oh, he was working, too. My windshields have never been cleaner. Hey, listen, if he ever needs a recommendation... He doesn't need any recommendation from you. My dad takes pride in his work, no matter what he's doing. I love my dad, and I'm very proud of him. I couldn't afford to get a tux. That's why I didn't ask you to the prom. I know I should have told I you the truth, but... I understand. I do. Uh, hey, listen, I hate to interrupt things, but Melanie is my date. And here's the moment we've all been waiting for. The king and queen of the prom. Mr. Richard Davies and Miss Melanie Marcus. Please step forward for the royal dance. Uh, excuse me. Um, they're playing our song. No, Richard. They're playing your song. And you should be out on that floor with the one person in this room who really loves you. You should dance with yourself. Well, Nicole, looks like you've lucked out. <laughs> I 